So we're looking at what we call classless IP addressing, where a 32-bit IP address is split into two parts, the network part and the host part. And the network part identifies our subnet, and the host part identifies our device inside that subnet. It's called classless because in the past, they defined five different classes, class A, B, C, D, and E. And that the classes in the old days defined where the split is between the network and host portion. But nowadays, the way to define where the split is is using the subnet mask. A second IP address, a special case mask, is used and tells us. For example, here, the first 22 bits in the mask are 1, meaning of our 32-bit IP address, the first 22 bits in the IP address are in the network portion. In the mask, the last 10 bits are 0, meaning in the IP address, the last 10 bits are the host portion. So take your 32 bits of your IP address, split it into two parts, network, then host. Where do you split? The mask tells you. So we've been going through some examples and some special case addresses. So far we've got our internet uh, with uh, some subnets of interest for this example, and we've assigned what we call network addresses. Normally we think an IP address is for a device, but there are some special case IP addresses which are for entire subnets, groups of devices or families of devices. So, for example, subnet A, instead of calling it subnet A, we actually give it a specific address, 1.1.0.0 slash 16. That's the network address, we say. Where the slash 16 means the mask has 16 ones, and the rest are zeros, meaning the IP address 1.1.0.0, the first 16 bits are the network portion, and the last, in this case 16 bits, are the host portion. This special case network address, the way that we get it, we have the network portion, and we set the host portion to all binary zeros. So the example we had last lecture was here was our subnet or our network address 1.1.0.0 slash 16 in binary this is the first 16 bits the subnet mask shown here tells us to split after the 16th bit the subnet mask of 16 ones or simply slash 16 in shorthand notation it says split here, so the network address 1.1 and the last 16 bits we set to 0. That's a special case network address. All of the devices on that subnet must start with the same 16 bits. That's our rule. So we had router 2 interface 0 starts with the same 16 bits and host H1 starts with the same 16 bits because both of those devices are on subnet A. So if we know the, the network address for that subnet, then we can allocate addresses for individual devices inside that subnet. And your homework was, and it's quite simple, given all the subnet uh, network addresses, choose some IP addresses for the devices. I'll show you which ones I chose in a moment. But while we're looking at the special case network address, 16 bits followed by 16 zeros for the special case network address. There's another special case address, which is used for a different purpose. It's called the directed broadcast address. And the way that we get it is that we take the same first 16 bits and we set the last bits to all binary ones. So let's do that, and then we'll explain what it's used for. It's easy to do that. Uh, so for this subnet A, we can say there's a, another address, which I'll call the directed broadcast. And for subnet A, 
The subnet has a corresponding directed broadcast address where the 16 bits at the start are the same. Now the first 16 bits, then we split and to get the director broadcast address, set the last bits to be all ones. So, and then we can convert into dot a decimal notation if we want to have a human friendly form. And in this case, it will be one dot one dot eight ones is two hundred and fifty five in decimal. And another eight ones is two hundred and fifty five. And to be precise, we'll include the mask there, slash sixteen. This is a special case address. We call it directed broadcast. The purpose of it, this address, we'll not go through detailed examples yet, we'll see some later in the slides, but the purpose is if you want to send to everyone in the subnet, I don't want to just send to host H1, I want to send every host in the subnet, then what I can do is create an IP datagram where the destination address is this 11255.255. It means, it has the meaning, send to everyone in that subnet. Even if you don't know how many devices are in the subnet, you can still send to all of them using the direct broadcast. Broadcast in this context means send to everyone, everyone in a subnet. Later we'll return and see an example of how it's used. But for now, just be aware how to derive the address. Subnet A has network address 1100-16 and has directed broadcast address 1.1.255.255/16 you can fill that in in this table you've already got the network addresses you can fill in the directed broadcast addresses for the other subnets as well you can do that for homework we will not need it today i think I'll just, to be complete, we'll write it. We'll write it here uh, in brackets. So this was the network address and this broadcast 1.1.255.255. .1 .255. The broad directed broadcast. We'll see there's an alternative later. And the other subnets would have a corresponding directed broadcast address. That have, for example, subnet B, 2.2.0.0 slash 16. You can find the first 16 bits will be the same. The last 16 bits will be all binary ones. And you'll find it becomes 2.2.255.255. And you can do that for the others. So, when we have a subnet, when we allocate addresses to devices inside that subnet, hosts and routers, then the mask tells us how many possible values that we can use. A mask of slash 16 means there are, in fact, 16 bits in the host portion. A mask of slash 24, 24 bits in the network portion, 8 bits remaining in the host portion. So with 8 bits in the host portion on subnet C, there are 2 to the power of 8, 256 possible addresses for devices in this subnet. Two of them are special cases that we cannot give to devices. We cannot give the address which has all zeros in the host portion, and we cannot give the address which has all ones in the host portion. Other than that, we can choose amongst the remaining 254 addresses. 
So H2, we can choose from 254 possible values. Router 3, interface 1, we can choose from 254 possible values, except they should not overlap. They should not be the same. They should be unique between the devices. We did that for H1 and R2, interface 0. H1, we chose 1.1.1.27. The first 16 bits are the same as our subnet address. The last 16 bits we chose. I chose in that case. Router 2, interface 0, the first 16 bits are the same. The last 16 bits are different from H1. They must be different from the other devices. I chose 1.1.1.1. Which values you choose is up to the operator of the network. Right? If it's your network, you can choose whatever you like, as long as it meets the rules. In some examples, I'll choose easy ones to write down. So let's choose some addresses for the remaining interfaces. That is, we've done H1 and R2 interface 0, but Router 2 also has an interface on subnet B, interface 1. Router 1 also on subnet B. Router 3 and Router 4. So each of those need IP addresses. The network address is 2.2.0.0. So what's a possible value for, say, Router 1 interface 1? Choose a value. Maybe you've written it down as your homework. Router 1 interface 1. Someone chose 2.2.0.27. Correct. It's okay. What did you choose? 2.2.0.1. Correct. Okay, so there are 65,000 possible values you can choose from. Since you all did your homework yourself, you probably chose different values. Fine. I'll choose some and we'll use them throughout, but you can use your own values. The point is, router 1 interface 1 must start with the same first 16 bits. And here's a shortcut. When it's 16 bits as a subnet mask, it means the split is at the second dot in the dotted decimal notation. Because the first decimal number means 8 bits, the second is another 8 bits, so 16 bits means at the second dot. In other words, the first two decimal values must be the same, the last two decimal values can be different. And when it's 24, it's at the third dot. So instead of having to convert to binary and back, you can maybe take a shortcut and realize that, OK, on subnet 4.4.1.0 slash 24, everything must have the same first 24 bits, or in decimal, 441. The last decimal number can, cannot be 0. It cannot be 255. That's all ones. So it can be from 1 up to 254. And you can choose any value there. In other words, if the subnet mask is slash 8, slash 16, or slash 24, sometimes we can do it in our heads without converting to binary to, to find where the split is and get the correct IP addresses. When it's slash 22, the split is not at one of the dots. So we should be careful there. So I'll go through an example with that. So I'll write down some addresses that I will choose because I'll use them later. So for router 1 interface 1, 2.2.something.something. .2 router 2 interface 1, 2.2.something.something else. All right, different from router 1 interface 1. And same with 4.0 and 3.0. Router 3 interface 1 and H2 should be 4.4.1 dot something. Here we'll have 4.4.2 dot something and on subnet E 3.3 dot something dot something. Subnets F and G we'll deal with in more detail. So let me write them down so we can continue. Where Get rid of all of that for now.
we've already written down for router 2 interface 1, uh, interface 0, H1, so let me fill in the rest so we have them for later. So you may choose different values, but that's okay. Uh, 2.2. Well, I'll fill in the remaining missing parts in a moment. This needs to be 2.2. something at slash 16. So these are on the same subnet. So they must start with 2.2 because they're slash 16. They're all on the same subnet if you look at the picture. So the last two decimal digits must be different amongst those four. And for whatever reason, I've chosen 1.5 here. You don't have to change yours. Or you can write them both down if you have your answer and then my answer, just so you can follow my example as well. And then we have some other values. This is a slash 24. And in this case, for router 3, I chose, I'm going to choose 10 and 20 here. There's a slash 16. These three are on the same subnet, 3.3.0.0. So I'll choose some different values for each of them, 1.1, 1.2, And to finish, H2 is on 4.4.1. And it's a slash 24 and something different, a bigger number. What's the maximum value I can include, use here? I cannot use zero because that's a special case. I could be one, two, three, four. I cannot use 10 because it's already used. And I could go up to 254. I cannot use 255 because that's equivalent to all ones. So from 1 up to 254, as long as it's not used by another. 156, something different. We've got two missing. I've, we'll do them in a bit more depth because they use a different mask where the split is not at the dots in the dotted decimal notation. Any questions on these, though, first? In practice, how do you get these IP addresses? Well, the operator of the network can set them either manually, you go to every computer and type it in, or more commonly, there's a protocol that can operate in the background that your computer is given an IP address from a server. DHCP is the protocol that does that in most networks. When your computer boots up, it contacts a special server that, which will allocate an address and that server will keep track of the, the used and the unused addresses so that we don't have conflicts. So what about R5 interface 1 and then R6 interface 1? Let's focus on subnet F, 3.3.0.0. 
In subnet F, the, the network address 3.3.28.0 uh, slash 22. Let's write it in binary. Three. Dot three twenty eight correct sixteen eight four twenty eight zero. That's our network address for subnet F. And the mask slash twenty two twenty two ones four sixteen twenty two ones in a row slash twenty two followed by the remaining ten zeros. So that's our mask, and that mask tells us where the split is. That is, the split is here between the network portion, the part that identifies our subnet, and the host portion. The network part and the host part. Every device on subnet F must have the same first 22 bits, the same network portion, and a unique host portion. Our, our directed broadcast, let's do the directed broadcast now. It's an easy one. The directed broadcast for subnet F. BC for broadcast. The same first 22 bits. The same first 22 bits. And then the last 10 bits must be all ones. That's our definition for director broadcast. Convert it to dotted decimal if you like. Three dot three dot thirty one dot two hundred and fifty five. Note that the way that the split is not at one of the dots, then it's, we need to be careful that uh, don't just assume that the broad, director broadcast always is finishes with 255. Here it started 3328.0 for the network address. The broadcast is 3331.255. network address, broadcast address. And they are in fact the limits. For this subnet, we start at 3328.0 as a special case, and then the devices inside the subnet can use numbers larger than that, 3328.1, 3328.2.3.4,
and can even go to 3.3.29.1, 3.3.29.2 and so on, all the way up to 3.3.31.254. That could be allocated for my device. 3.3.31.255 is a special case for directed broadcast. So they are the lower limits, the network address, and the higher limit, the broadcast address. The devices can use values inside that range. So let's consider some devices. Let's say, what have we got? We've got uh, router 5, interface 1 is on this subnet. If we look at our picture. So let's allocate an address. We need the same first 22 bits. And then the last 10 bits, our mask, can be any value except all zeros and except all ones. Let me choose a value. What am I going to use? Easy one. It's not all zeros, it's not all ones, so that's valid. It's not used because it's the only one so far. It will be 3.3.28.1. That's for my router 5. Although our picture doesn't include another host, let's assume all subnets have hosts. We didn't draw them all. So let's say there's a H3 on subnet F. So when I give that an IP address, it must start with the same first 22 bits. Then the mask tells us we change to the host portion. And H3, the last 10 bits, cannot be all zeros, cannot be all ones, and cannot be a currently used value, the one we use for R5. There's a possible value which is different. There were 10 bits to choose from, so we actually have 2 to the power of 10 possible uh, different values, 1,024 possible different values, except the two special cases, all zeros, all ones, leaves us 1,022 possible values, but we can't use the one we just used, so we can choose from the other 1,021. I chose one. So that's a valid address for H3 on subnet F. And in dotted decimal notation, you can convert 3.3. What do we get? 29.1. So you have to be careful with the dotted decimal notation. Devices in subnet F 3.3.28.0 include 3.3.28.1 and 3.3.29.1 and the director broadcast is 3.3.31.255 so it's not as simple as when we cut at 8, 16 and 24 where it cuts at the dots what's my recommendation? when you have a mask which is not 8, 16 or 24 write the address down in binary and look exactly where the cut is. If you have 8, 16 or 24, maybe you can use a shortcut, but you can use in binary if you like. Questions on director broadcast or how we allocate IP addresses to devices? 
Everyone got a correct value for R5 interface 1? Should have been 33.28, 29, 30 or 31 dot something. For subnet F, uh, so, sorry, subnet G, the last subnet, again, you can allocate addresses. You need to do it in a similar manner. So let me fill in our table to complete this. Router 5, what did I choose? 3.3.28.1 slash 22 and router 6 I'm going to choose 3.3. What can it be? 16 or 17 or 18 or 19 I think it can be there. I'll choose 17 to be different. Dot 4. You can have other values there. Any questions on the IP address allocation before we move on to routing? Okay, then let's look at our, our handout and see what we've done. You now, we started with the network address as I gave you that. You can quite easily get the directed broadcast. It's similar to the network, but the host portion is all ones and we've just gone through the actual IP addresses for a range of devices. The next thing we want to do is fill in some routing tables. Our devices need routing tables to know who to send to next and I've got space for routing tables for four of the routers. We'll I think get one or two done today. So we'll do router two first and here on the right we can do another router later. So the routing table, remember, for a particular device to reach some destination, who is the next router we send to to get there? This information comes from the least cost paths. If we know the least cost paths from source to destination, that destination is listed as the first column and the next node or the next router in that least cost path is listed in the second column. So that's our concept for a routing table. We'll try and fill that in for our devices. Let's talk about and, and the least cost paths or the routing table for some of the devices and then we'll fill it in with the, the details. Let's start with router R2. Okay, let's say we are router R2 and we need our routing table. And for least cost paths, we'll assume the, the least number of hops, the sort of the obvious path, we'll see. That is, if you're at R2 and you want to reach H2, where do you think R2 should send the packet? If the packet's at R2, we want to get it to H2, destination is H2, where should R2 send the packet? to R3 interface 0. Be careful, when we talk about a router we should be specific about the interface because R3 is actually attached to three different inter uh, subnets. So if we're here and we want to get to H2, send to R3 interface 0 on R3 and then R3 will deliver it to H2. If we're at R2 and we want to get to someone, maybe there's H4 on subnet G, where should R2 send the data to? We're at R2, we want to reach H4 on subnet G, we should send to R4 interface 0. If we want to reach someone on subnet E, we also send to R4 interface 0. That's the next node in the path. 
and someone on subnet F, sender R4 interface 0. On subnet D, sender R3 interface 0. What about if someone is on subnet A? That is, R2 wants to send to H1. Which is the next router? R2 wants to send to H1. What is the next router? R2 to H1. Next router is... You're going to send to R4 to get to H1. There is no next router. When the current node, R2, is on the same subnet as the destination, don't send to another router. Send direct to the destination. There's no need to send via an intermediate router. So we'll, in the routing table, we'll treat that as a special case. To reach H1 from R2, send direct to H1. Don't send to a next router. Similar, if, we, if there was H5 on subnet B from R2, we'd send direct to H5. That is, any destination on the subnets we are attached to, we are directly attached to subnet A and subnet B, send direct to the destination. There's no next router. So we'll list that in our routing table. What about if I want to reach subnet Z? Where do I send to? R2 wants to reach subnet Z, Z. Remember at the top we have the rest of the world, the internet, and there's millions of other subnets out there. So if I want to reach anyone else that's not in this picture, I would send to R1, interface 1. We can think of that as a default route. We have specific routes to the, the destinations that we can see here, by default, anyone else, let's send to R1 interface 1 and hope that will get to the destination. Before we fill in the routing table for R2, it's the first point. If I want to reach H2, we said send to R3 interface 0. Well, in our routing table, we don't say R3 interface 0 we say the IP address of R3 interface 0. So the next router will be listed as 2.2.1.2. So in our routing table, we need two, two columns to fill in, destination and next router. If the next router we said is R3 interface 0, we'll enter in this next router column 2.2.1.2. So we use the IP address, not the router name. What about the destination? Let's focus on subnet C. Let's say there are 100 hosts on that subnet. H2, H20, H21, many hosts there. If R2 wants to reach H2, next router, R3 interface 0. If R2 wants to reach another host on subnet C, H5, next router, R3 interface 0. If want to reach a different host on subnet C, it will still be R3 interface 0. In other words, for R2 to reach any host on subnet C, send to router 3 interface 0. So, we don't have routes to individual hosts. We have a single route saying for R2 to reach subnet C, send to R3 interface 0. Meaning if the host is, or the destination is on subnet C, we'll send to this router. Instead of having entries for every possible host, we just have entries for each subnet. And that greatly simplifies routing in the internet. When we have billions of hosts, we don't need entries for each of them, we just need for the subnets that cover uh, those hosts. And to refer to the subnet, we don't say subnet C, we say subnet 4.4.1.0 slash 24. We use the network address. Given that, let's fill in the routing table for R2. So 
So we'll start with R2 and fill it in. So first, let's say we're at R2. And we want to reach the destination of subnet A, which is identified. Subnet A is 1.1.0.0 slash 16. Meaning, if the destination is on this subnet, then we will send to the next router. Well, for subnet A, there is no next router. From R2 to subnet A, we are directly attached. Don't send to a next router, so I will say send direct. In my routing table, no next router. I'll just write it direct. Different, uh, different software will use different notation here. It won't say direct, but the concept is there is no next router. We are directly attached to that subnet. So let's fill in for the other destinations. Subnet B. 2.2.0.0 slash 16. We are actually also attached to that subnet. So we can send direct. Subnet, let's try subnet uh, D. And subnet C and D. That is, it's going back to our picture. We're at R2. We want to reach 4.4.1.0. We should send to router 3 interface 0. More precisely, we should send to 2.2.1.2. To reach anyone on subnet 4.4.1.0, slash 24 send to router 2.2.1.2 any problems so far with our routing table Questions? We've done the evaluation for the course, so I can be as mean as I like for the remaining lectures. Maybe ask you to submit your handouts today. So fill in the rest of the routing table for router R2 if there are no questions. R2. We've got the two directly attached subnets. We've got subnet C, 4410, so do subnet D. And then think about the remaining subnets. You, you don't need to use the entire table. The, the, the space I've provided is just, uh, it's the same for all the routers. You don't have to use all the rows. You should have a routing table as small as possible, as few rows as possible. How are you going to reach subnet D? We start at R2, we want to get to 4.4.2.0. We should also send to R3 interface 0. 
So it would be the same dest next router as subnet C. From R2's perspective, we send the same direction to reach either C or D. To reach subnet D, the next router is also 2.1.2. So not so hard. What about subnet E? To reach 3.3.0.0 slash 16, R2 should send to R4 interface 0. And you look up your IP address. Now yours may be different, so be careful, but the IP address I gave R4 interface 0 was 2.2.1.3. So I'll use that in the routing table. Any problems? One of the easier things we've done in the course. Okay, so do for the last <coughs> remaining subnets. So you can do for F and G, and then for the rest of the world, the rest of the internet, you can use the default route. So I'll write down for F and G, let's have a look at them first. To reach F, 3.3.28.0 slash 22, I, R2 will also send a router 4 interface 0. Similar for 3.3.16.0 slash 22. Was it 28.0 slash 22? And 3.3.16.0 slash 22. Same next router. And to reach the rest of the world, anyone out on the internet, I'll use a special case for any other destination. Send to R1 interface 1. That is anyone out here send to R1 interface 1 which I chose as 2215. Everyone get that? Or similar if you have different IP addresses? Yes. What is star? Star means in general in computing any value. It's what we call a wild card. In this I'm using it to mean for any other, think of it for any other value, for any other destination. So if we don't match the pre previous rows for the destination, then send it to 2215. We sometimes refer to that as the default route, the default gateway. So star I'm just using as a, as a way to indicate any value. 
sometimes in software you'll see it as uh, instead of star they'll say zero dot zero zero slash zero. All right, you don't have to write that one down, but the, that's just some way that software shows it. Any value that doesn't match. Any other value? Now, how do we use that? If we have this routing table, then the way that we use it, when router R2 has a IP datagram, it looks at the destination address. That is, when we have a packet to send at R2, we look at the destination address of that packet and check in the routing table. So let's consider some examples. Let's say the destination address is uh, 4.4.1.156. R2 sees an IP datagram. We don't care who it came from at this stage. We care who we need to get it to. Destination is 4.4.1.156. So what R2 does is realizes that is not me. I am not 4.4.1.156. Therefore, I will look in my routing table to see who to send it to next. So what we can think of for these entries in the routing table, we want to find a match where at least the first mask set of address match. What do I mean? Compare 4.4.1.156 to 1.1.0.0. Compare them in binary. How many of the first bits match? 4.4.1.156 in binary compared to 1.1.0.0 in binary, how many of the first bits from the left match are the same? Four is what? Five zeros, one zero zero. One is seven zeros. One. So in fact, five bits match, and then we have a difference. So the first five bits match, so zero and four, of zero and four, but then we have a difference. Now what we need is the first 16 bits to match. The subnet mask tells us, well, we need 16 bits to match, which they don't. So therefore we say this does not match. That is, the destination 441156 is not on the subnet 1.1.0.0. And we know that because of the way that we've designed the addressing. So this destination does not match the first row. Does it match the second row? Do the first 16 bits match? No, they don't. The first 8 bits, there'll be a difference. 4.4.1.0, 4.4.1.156, do the first 24 bits match? Yes, they will. 4.4.1, those 24 bits will match the 24 bits of the destination address. Therefore, we have a match. So we will use that as the next router. So that's how we check. And it's quite easy conceptually. Find, does this IP address fit on this subnet? No, it's not on the subnet 110022. It's on the subnet 441. Now, there are some exceptions. Sometimes we have may, may have more than one match. It's possible that we have more than one match. In that case, we choose the match which has the most number of bits that match, the longest prefix. But I think we'll not see that. 
So, in this case, we compare 441156 to 1100. Do the, are there 16 bits matching? No. Are there 16 bits matching between this IP address and 2200? No. Are there 24 bits matching between this and this? Yes. What we would normally do is do them in order, but in, in reality they are all checked. Do 24 bits match between this and this one? No. 16 bits match? No. We will see quite easily none of these will match. Only 4410. This is a special case. We'll just use that if none of them match. We've got one match here. So the result is that we will send to next router 2212. So router 2 has a datagram, destination 441156, checks the routing table, matches the third row, send to 2212. We will send to 2212 and that router will do the same thing. It will compare the destination against its routing table to see who to send to next. You can fill in the routing table for the other routers. Let's consider another case. Any questions on that one? That's an easy one. It's going to disappear. Any questions? OK. Let's try a different destination. We have a different IP datagram and the destination address. is 3.3.29.1. Let's go through the rows one by one and see which ones match or which ones don't is easy. Do the first 16 bits match with 1.1? No. 2.2? No. 4.1? No. 4 no. Does that match with 3.3.29? No. This one? No. Now let's consider these three. Do the first 16 bits, 3.3, match with the first 16 bits of our destination? Yes, they would. 3.3 .3 is the first 16 bits, but in decimal. And 3.3 .3 are the same. So yes, this is a match. What about this one? Do the first 22 bits of 3.3.29 .3 match 3.3.28? Can we squeeze it in? Three dot three and twenty nine. Dot one. There's our IP address, 3.3.29.1. And we're comparing with And we're comparing the first 22 bits, 8, 16, 
at this point. Do the first 22 bits match? Maybe small up there, you can check. Yes, they do match. It's the same. First 22 bits match. So in fact, 3.3.29.1 matches 3.3.28.0. So it matches two rows here. The third one, does it match 3.3.16? Hands up for yes. 3.3.16 and 3.3.29. Do the first 22 bits match? Hands up for yes. Hands up for no. Sixteen, so the first sixteen bits, three dot three will match. Sixteen is equivalent to zero 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 one zero zero. So no they would not match. Sixteen is what zero 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 one followed by four zeros. Compare that with three zeros and three ones, they'll be different. That would not match. Here we have two matches. Which one do we use? Well, what we do is we choose the one that matches with the most number of bits. And if you compare the one that matches the most number of bits, so they both have at least their subnet mask worth, this one matches uh, 22, and that's 22. They're the, uh, the same here, but the second one matches more than 16 bits. It matches 22 bits, so that one would be chosen. If we have two matches, choose the one with the most number of bits. Now that's a case we will not see very often, so don't worry too much about the details. But the point is, in fact, we don't need that second route here. Because 3.3.28.0 slash 22 is in fact within 3.3.0.0 slash 16. If it matches the second one, 3.3.28.0, it will always match 3.3.0.0. Anything that has the same first threes followed by a 28, 29 or whatever, will also match 3.3. .3. So in fact we don't need this second route. This one is sufficient and the way that the subnets were designed, the addressing was that 3.3.0016 includes these two, .28 and .16 that I allocated. And in practice what, uh, how the internet is structured is that it's like this in that we have one subnet and within that we can have sub-subnets and effectively 3.3.28.0 is a, is a sub-subnet. It's a sub of the 3.3.0.0. There's a hierarchy of subnets. If we look at our picture it may be easier to see the idea from router 2, if anything starts with 3.3, .3, any destination 3.3, .3, send a router 4. Even if it's 3.3.28, 3.3.16, anything that starts with 3.3, .3, send a router 4. So instead of having three different entries in our routing table, we can cut it down to one. And that's the way that I chose the subnet addresses for F and G that they are a subset of 3300. Maybe that's a bit too much detail for some people but that's a, a practical thing that's used in the internet to simplify routing. We only have a route to the larger subnet not to the individual subnets. The end result
we can have a simpler routing table. It can be limited to just that's an even better routing table because 3.0.0 covers subnets F and G and we have the same next router so we don't need those other two routes. If you include them you'll get the same results you'll get to the correct destination but it, we often try to have an optimal routing table as small as possible. And that's possible the way that I allocated F, G, and E. In, in an exam, unless I ask exp explicitly to give the optimal one, I think I would accept both answers, this one or the previous one where you had the two there. It would be OK. Unless I say give the optimal routing table. Oh, other times in an exam I may say let's make it even easier let's process the routing table in order it's not done in practice but a simple way to think of the routing table is just simply do it in order what we've been doing is trying all but if you do it in order the first one that matches we use and that makes life easier as well so What's your task? Complete the routing tables for the other nodes. Specifically, we've just done R2. You can do R3, R4, do R5. There's no need to do R6. You'll see it's essentially the same as R5. There's one a small difference, but to save a bit of time, just do R5. And also, the hosts have routes. The hosts need routing tables. So create the routing tables for H1 and H2. That is, we've done R2, you do R3, R4, and R5. And at the bottom, you'll find that very easy, host H1 and H2. Complete those routing tables so you know how, uh, how to create them. <coughs> 